We're back, part two. Let's get into this. One one, Southampton Palace at St Mary Stadium. Match was okay. I was there myself. Don't like Southampton Stadium. It's okay. Bit. It's a bit meh for a club which is trying to go for Europe, but they can't. Um, we were rubbish. Uh, Danny Ings, big goal threat. Definitely a top contender for a Golden Boot this year. Proper, really good strikers. Totally wasted at Liverpool. Um, Tomkins scored an all right goal. Nice little free kick. Bossed the defenders out of the way. Easy goal. Um, we should have won. That's simple. They measured the VAR line from Zaha's arm when they measured from everyone else's foot. That goal should have stood. Not happy about that one. Back again with another 1-1 one, one draw. Palace Norwich. Oh gosh. Oh man. We were rubbish. Um, Norwich showed class in certain aspects of this game. Cantwell, Balduena, proper players. Puki, non-existent. He had a good half of the season. That's it. Um, Max Aarons didn't look impressive. Quite happy we didn't buy him last season. Um, I think Arsenal and other top teams are happy that they didn't buy him as well. Um, upsides, Pierrick made, made a Premier League debut. He was on for five minutes. He was alright. He set the through ball in for Zaha for him to cross it across the box. Wickham had a nice goal. Um, very close. Too close for comfort, but happy we got a draw. At least a point. Well done. And now it's FA Cup time. Um, Palace Derby, lost 1-0, rubbish. <laughs> um, well, in reality, we didn't put a team out at all. Um, Pierrick started, looked awful. He looked like he was completely off the pace. There's no way he's Premier League prospect. I, He'll probably do well out on loan next year. I don't know, maybe a League One championship. He just he just fills me with Sally Kai Kai all over again. Um, for Derby, Bogle, Bogle looked really good. Um, for the transfer window, hopefully, we would be looking at the time that we'd be looking to at someone like him in the winter, in the winter transfer window, because he looked really good, very attacking, very solid in defence. Only 21 at the time, nice strong defender, really good on the ball actually. Um, I think the biggest part of the game was this is the first time a referee has ever looked at the screen for VAR and it's disgusting that it's taken half the year for this to happen once and I think that the ref got it wrong I'm a Palace fan, obviously I'll, I'll be biased towards them but I do not believe that that was a red card for offence horrible referee and this is why we don't ever have English referees in world tournaments and the next one is Palace City at the glorious empty had started off the game check two sun got him on your loan this is his first start for palace brilliant scored a goal after 39 minutes from a corner lovely jubbly um very nice to watch breathtaking performance the defense was class i can't fault the defense i know we shipped two goals but two goals against manchester city is pretty reasonable i'm not going to lie to you um we held on for a long time, then Aguero scores two goals, 82 and 87th minute. We're already down. Zaha makes a breaking run on the 90th minute. All the way through their whole field. Kills everyone. But that only happens from a McCarthy slide tackle from De Bruyne, lays it off to him, Zaha's gone. Creams Walker, sends a nice cross straight, hard, low into the box. Connor Wickham's right there, but Fernandinho is right in front of him. The heart creams it across so hard. You what? Fernandinho runs the ball into his own net. Brilliant, 2-2. But -two. on the counter-attack once again, we're, f we're completely free. It's Zaha versus Stones and the keeper. Zaha sprinting, he gets, he, gets a, he gets a yard on Stones. 
All you need to do is a little chip to the right of his right foot. He didn't poke it far enough right, it just glances past the post. Ultimate performance, another draw. I'm not upset, I'm very happy. 1-1. One, 2-0 one. loss to Southampton at Selhurst. Um, honestly, we made it too easy for him. I don't think we played very well. Crippled by injuries once again. Um, however, I think that Rolf Hasenhutl, man like Rolf, has changed their team completely, changed Danny Ings into a proper striker, um, proper quality team now, good passing play, good shooting. However, Ward Prowse is still a twat. We're back at Celeste, we're back again, we're back with another loss against Sheffield United. Um, Honestly, really early in the game, Tucson skied a one-on-one -on -one with a keeper. Should have put it 1-0. That would have changed the game. Would have won it, really. Um, after we missed, died. Complete, complete capitulation of the team. Um, carbon copy of the first game. If you played half decent, you would have won that by 11-0. Both teams are awful. Crap to watch. Um, the reason why they scored was it was an own goal. Gaita went up for a catch, went through his hands, bad mistake, you can't really get on him though, that was probably his first mistake of the season. Everton Palace, 3-1 Everton, however, Lord Christian Benteke scored his first goal of the season, it was a banger, it really wasn't, it was rubbish. It, he just got a through ball and he hit it straight at Pickford, but Pickford's a whack keeper now. He just went straight under him. Easy goal. I was going mental. This guy's insane. He's a world class striker, I'm telling you. However, that game really showed how bad our centre backs and how old they were. Richardson just absolutely skills up Ward, sprints down to the goal from the halfway line and scores. It just shows how old and slow our centre backs are. You really need an investment on the younger centre backs. Completely outclassed. We were alright going forwards though. Finally, a win against Newcastle at home. Just before I start talking about the match, um, the stats 16 shots, 7 on target compared to 4, none on target. Insane. Okay, so, Anderson Maximan. Did what he did in the first match, showing us exactly why we should have bought this man. This man is an insane baller. We really missed out. He's definitely worth about 40 million right now. We could have got him for 15 million. Absolute steal for Newcastle right there. Anyway, moving on. Final round free kick. It was wondrous. So the thing that made the free kick so special was Dubravka moved the wrong way. He took one step the wrong way and Van Arnold kicked the ball and then when he took that step he was too far away to reach the ball but I still think if he didn't even move the ball was hit so cleanly and it was played so nicely that he wouldn't have got it anyway. Um, class performance, Newcastle are normally really hard and tough team to beat. Um, right at the end, 95th minute, Zaha's through, one on one with Lazaro. Zaha gets the beating of him so easily but Zaha, Z Zalaro literally just drags this guy down. He grabs the back of his shirt and his shoulder, pulls him to the floor, expected red card. Was it really worth it? If he got the ball back, the ref would have blew up. It doesn't really matter. I don't think it was worth it for a couple game ban. Derby day two. Atmosphere was brilliant from the Palace end. As usual, nothing from Brighton. Um, match, it was all right. Both teams played okay. Zaha got both their full backs a yellow card, got one of their centre backs a yellow card, and he even got someone who wasn't even on the pitch a yellow card. It was brilliant. He was going wow, wow, wow. But Zaha showed him exactly the class he has. And Palace got the win. He looked like a right twat. He really did. Um, great banter. Really was. Um, the goal. Nice long ball from Gaita. Then take a nice chest, down, turn, a little bit of a drive, nice little cutting pass to the left. I use three, no centre backs um, no centre backs covering him. Nice shot. Matt Ryan really should have saved it, but 
I think he was so close and I hit it so hard that there's no one that's going to save that. Nice goal. The scenes after the goal was went in, all the Palace fans smoked bomb. Everything was going mad. I'm loving it. All the players bundled in everyone, all giving it to the Brighton fans, especially Zaha, especially Ben Teke doing this. It was awesome. Van Arnold coming in really late with a mad scream. It was brilliant. I love my club. Come on. Dirty Watford. Dirty. But we won 1 0. Little, little goal out of nothing from IU. Little swivel, bang. Nice goal. Um, held them off really well. However, Watford had 19 fouls and only 4 red cards. 14 of those fouls were on IU and Zaha. Disgusting way of playing. I really do not like Watford. They're just a horrible team to play against. Lockdown killed me. This is when lockdown started between Watford and Bournemouth game. Four months of pain. Four months of no football. Four months of speaking to your girlfriend all day, every day. That's mad. Anyway, I spent all my time playing career mode on FIFA doing what we should have and shouldn't have done in the transfer windows, simulating all of it, seeing what should have happened, where we could have finished, every single time we finished bottom, even when I was making the best transfers possible. It's just that our squad was so rubbish that we couldn't do nothing in the FIFA League. Bournemouth Palace, first game after lockdown, so refreshing. I was so happy when I was watching this match and it was such a brilliant performance. The team looked up for it, the team looked like they haven't even missed a beat. The team looked better when we came back. We looked like, even though we had a small chance of Europe, that small chance looked very, very doable. Because the next matches, if we won a couple of them, Europe could have been done. We could have finished in sixth place. That's crazy. Anyway, Luca, amazing free kick. Absolutely insane. Unsavable. I know Ramsdale's a young keeper, he's alright up and coming keeper but there's no way anyone's saving that the pace the power the dip brilliant the placement even um after that literally five minutes later brilliant brilliant work up from the from the back guy to passes out goes up the pitch through a couple of passes nice flick out to zaha does the left back nice pull back into the center spot are you first time bang goal after that two no up sat down just played it safe, kept the win, kept a clean sheet. Uh, however, Davy Brooks came on quite late in the match. Proper player. If they do go down, I'm not sure they will, but if they do go down, I wouldn't be too happy if we use him as a target for a backup winger in the future windows. At Anfield today, we have Liverpool Palace. I'm not going to say much. We got battered 4-0. Um, Liverpool disliked them as well because they stopped us going into Europe when we finished second in the league. Um, they deserve to be champions. They really do. They're the best team in Europe by miles. Um, however, we could have given them a better game if we didn't have injuries. Um, and it doesn't help that Wilfred Zaha, our best player, got injured after the first five minutes and had to go off. Nothing to play for, they already won. Bad match. Palace Burnley at Celeste. Lost 1 0. Um, at this point, we knew Europe was gone because we can't be losing to people like Burnley anymore. I know they finished higher than us in the league, but if we want to go for Europe, we can't be finishing under them. Um, I don't like saying that, there's still still loads of injuries, just because people are so old, they get injured so easily. Um, Scott Down played really well, he's come back into the team as our starting centre-back. Honestly, I think he's our second safest centre-back. Our best pairing right now is Cahill and Dan. It's really shocking to know they're our two oldest players, and they must be some of the oldest in the league. Anyway, match was really hard to watch, really boring, well done to Burnley, I guess. Leicester Palace at Leicester Stadium, battered, 3-0 loss. Um, I think that 
there was a bet to say that we'll give Vardy his 100th goal of the season, of the Premier League I mean, and that's exactly what he got. Um, also, this match again shows how bad and slow the backline is. You can't let Vardy let you can't let Vardy go. And once he's going, it's hard to keep up. But to be that far behind, it's disgraceful. Um, that's it, really. Palace Chelsea lost three two. However, brilliant, brilliant performance from Palace right here. Um, Honestly, I thought the game was dead when they went 2-1 up. When they went 2-0 up, I mean. But Wilfred Zaha takes the ball, takes control. Good 50 yards out. Just has a pop. Absolute screamer of a goal. 70 miles an hour past Kepler. Dipping, swerving. It looked like he could save it, but honestly, I don't blame him for not saving it. Wonder goal. Then the second half, we let Tammy Abraham have an easy goal. We let Loftus cheat run. We have lost his cheek a couple of years ago. We should know that we shouldn't let that man run because he's dangerous. Nice little chip over the back line. Easy goal. Then literally 30 seconds later, brilliant goal from us. Pass, pass, pass. Give it to Benteke. Nice goal. I don't care that we lost, but the way we played made me really excited for the Villa match. Made me really excited to think that we can actually get an easy win here. Palace Villa. Um, if you think Wilfred Zaha is a diver, then look at this dive from Mr. Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish fouls our player and falls over a good half a second after. If you watch the replay, it's laughable, trust me. If you look at it on YouTube or Twitter, you will find it and you will laugh. Um, the rest of the match, rubbish, 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 rubbish. We lost 2-0, I had such good expectations for this match because of how we played at Chelsea, but we were trash. Crystal Palace against Manchester United at Selhurst Park. Um, yes, two VAR decisions went against us. The first one, definite penalty on Lindelof from Zaha. If that, if we got that penalty, they wouldn't have run down the other end and Rashford wouldn't have scored a brilliant goal. Where he sat down Van Arnold and Ward and slowed it in. That wouldn't have happened if the penalty was given and also VAR should have looked at it. Trust me, VAR even said it should have been a penalty, but I don't know why I didn't give it. I swear in that VAR booth they must do a coin toss, and they must have a heavy majority towards the bigger team, because lower teams do not get choices against big teams. Um, the next one is Ayu, scored a nice goal, really nice goal from Zaha, crossed it all the way across the goal, Ayu threw himself out of the back post. He was a toenail offside. It was so annoying. Because scoring one of them goals late in the match against a proper big team really spurs on the team. However, they measured the VAR from wan lifted foot and they changed the frame. The frame they chose before, i.e. was onside. They chose the frame after. The frame after when the ball was already away from Zaha's foot quite away. For the first frame, the ball just left his foot. They changed it to the next frame because Jordan I was offside in that frame. I really don't like how this VAR thing is going on. I think they should they should be higher tech, which is put into this. I think they should have more, I mean not more, better cameras. Like what they do in cricket, how they've got 100, and 100 plus frames per second instead of just 30, which these cameras are using. I think with such a big league, they should really invest in this stuff so they can have the most accurate results possible. Um, in the match, Zaha played really well. He made Juan Bissaka look average again, two matches in a row. Um, last thing, Bissaka is definitely a liability. He's not, he's not good enough. And also Cahill getting injured badly in the Chelsea match. Saka and Dan really isn't the best combination, I don't think. Wolves Palace, 2-0 um, loss, expected really, um, I can't really say anything about the match apart from Mitchell had his first Premier League debut the whole game, I thought he played really well actually, um, because Van Arnold got injured in the last match, um, Mitchell had the, what I called the baptism of fire, because he played his first match in the Premier League against Adama Traore. He did alright actually, 
He's not the fastest guy in the world. He can defend and he can go forward quite well. But he needed help from Shook in this match. Oh, he was really outclassed. Wolves, I, I think they're a brilliant team. I really respect what Nuno's done there. He's built a proper team from the ground up. I know they've spent a lot of money, but they have brought a lot of quality. Jimenez, Doherty, Neto. Lots of players with a lot of talent. They're going to do big things next year. Last match, Spurs Palace. 1-0, finally got a point after lockdown. We have the second worst form after lockdown, only four points. Four points in eight games, that's rubbish. Anyway, I'm really happy with the performance. Um, we played really well, we attacked really well, we defended really well, but we had one slip up where we just turned off, let Kane have an easy shot. Nice goal, Kane just scores, doesn't he? Um, before the match started, everyone was really happy. We've actually signed a player, we signed Nathan Ferguson. Really happy about that. Another video will come out about that guy later and some and more things to do with transfers. Um, later in the match, Schluck scored a nice goal from a corner. I should have scored it, but he slipped, but thankfully the slip pushed the ball into Schluck's path. Schluck is a proper baller. So happy we brought that guy. He just seems to save us over and over and over again. Um, after what happened, I'm really excited for next season. I don't think Mitchell's ready, but I think he's definitely good enough to have on the bench. Um, last thing about that match, gotta love Mourinho, man. I think he's a Palace fan, even though he might say he's not, but I think he is. What a guy. Okay, and that's it. Um, champions, Liverpool, relegated. Bournemouth, Watford and Norwich. Thank you for Watford going down. I'm very happy about that. Bournemouth have good players. Watford have one good player in Ismaili Saar. Norwich have two good players in Cantwell and Balduena. Um, Alright season. Um, if you don't count the end of it, really good season. Um, really excited for what we're doing next year and I hope that we have a good transfer window. Anyway, take care.